Some folks think you make a choice for God once in your life. Ah, but you got to do some choosing every day. You chose to come to church tonight. Amen. I said so many times in the Old Testament there was a command. When you come to the house of God, you was commanded to bring an offering. That was a turtle dove or a lamb or a bullock or an ox or a goat, whatever. Amen. But in this dispensation, we bring fruit of the calves of our lips, fruit of our lips. Come before him with words. Oh, I come to praise his name tonight. How about you? Remember all these needs tonight one by one. We know God is able. He's a healer. There's nothing too hard for him. Take all these needs. We'll remember Sister Samuel in prayer, Sister Vade in prayer. Remember Brother Wright in prayer. Brother and Sister Blevins in prayer. Remember the Hall family in prayer. Others that are sick will remember in prayer. We know God is able. He's a healer. He's a prayer answer in God. Won't believe God to do it. Any other requests? May no one uplift hand. 
Let's go before the throne right now. Dear God, in Jesus' name, we bring all these needs to you tonight, God. Oh, we pray for Sister Samuel, Lord. We pray for Brother Wright. We pray for Sister Veda, God. Pray for the Hall family, every need there, God. Every request on this paper, spiritual needs, physical needs, financial needs, domestic needs, any need, oh God. We adore you tonight. We love you tonight. We magnify you tonight. Have your way in this service tonight. Glad to have our guests tonight. Let's give them a good hand. Praise God. Amen. Well, let's have a little church tonight. Come on, let's worship the Lord. Baptize me, Jesus, with the Holy Ghost. Thou shalt have power, your word says so.
till the battle is over. Don't wait till the victory is won. Just remember whatever God told you. It's yours and it's already done. So don't wait, don't wait, don't wait, don't wait, shout now. of worship. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Oh, God's a good God. Amen. Brother Ron Hall preached, he's a good God on a bad day. And I believe that. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. My, what a move of the Holy Ghost God gave us this morning. My, 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 my. Amen. I don't want to take that for granted. Expecting the Lord to move in this service tonight. Oh, he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Oh, he'll help you. Thank God for your goodness and your kindness, your love and your mercy. Amen. Praise the Lord. How about Sister Autumn coming in? And Brother Jimmy and Sister Autumn singing us a song. Had to pray for me. My voice is kind of, I don't know, kind of trying to get out on me. If I tried to preach tonight, I'd sound like a woman preacher with laryngitis. That'd be bad. You know what? Praise the Lord.
Jeremiah said, it's the Lord's mercies. We are not consumed because his compassions fail not. New every morning, great is thy faithfulness. I'm glad when I woke up this morning, he had a new batch of mercy waiting on me. Reason he did, because he would know I would need it. Amen. That house of Bethesda simply means house of mercy. Amen. Paul says, we're vessels of mercy. He said, according to his mercy has he saved us. Lord, I'm not going to shake my fist in the hand of God. Give me what I deserve. I'd already be in a Christless grave, headed for a devil's hell. But oh, God's been so good to me. Amen. When you read the book of Jonah and you find out his, 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 uh, his problem, Really, you find it out in that last chapter. Even he went down there. He did not have a message of repentance. He only had a message of judgment. Forty days and God will destroy this city. There's not any mercy in that message. But you know what? The king come off the throne. Folks went in sackcloth and ashes. Everybody went in fasting. And the Lord spared the city. And you can hear Jonah in the fourth chapter. God, I didn't want to do this. I know what kind of God you are. <laughs> you're full of compassion and you're slow to wrath. Ain't you glad God's like that? Praise God. Praise God. He said, one old woman said, God, I wish you'd kill every hypocrite in the house till her heart missed a beat. Well, Lord, maybe, amen, another time. Praise God. Amen. Tanner, stand and testify. Someone's so glad to have you. Yes. Oh, yes, it is. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Why don't the choir get ready to come and sing? Amen. We got your money this morning. Praise the Lord. It's kind of different way we're used to doing it. Because we could take a double dip tonight, I guess. Praise the Lord. Amen. Some of them's out tonight, but they'll do all right. Hallelujah. God is good. Come, choir sing. Thank you. 
practiced another new one so y'all worship with us. Give him some praise. How about you? 
Well, why don't you stand with me? We're going to turn this old Bill Lawhorn. We're going to do what he feels. I'd like to say we're glad I had to have uh, Sister Lawhorn and Victoria with us. Love them so much. Appreciate them. Amen. Being with us. I want him to do preach and sing and sing and preach and preach and sing. Now, when he was young, he could do a whole lot of that. Praise the Lord. Sing and and uh, uh, he was a, he was a, back when he was a young man, he was a, he was a guitar picker. He, y'all remember that? Picking that guitar. Amen. And uh, uh, we love Brother Law and appreciate him and Sister Lawhorn and, and Sister Victoria. Hey, well, y'all going to help him tonight? That pretty week, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Well, at least you're being honest. Thank the Lord. Come for the Lord. God bless you. Love you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. God bless you. you may be seated. We uh, appreciate Brother and Sister Epley and uh, appreciate them including us in this 70th birthday deal. You only turn 70 one time. And uh, he has hundreds of friends. But he don't have too many that he's new longer than us. But uh, some people come into your life for a season and some come into your life and stay. And uh, the Epleys have been in our life for over 35 years and a very a uh, special place in our life and heart, and, and uh, that's never changed. Thank God for people that uh, are consistent. Somebody told me tonight, the four-year said, I'm glad to see that you're still in the truth. So, well, uh, somebody said, what would you be if you wouldn't have apostolic? I guess I'd be ashamed. I hope I would be. <laughs> to whom shall we go? Where are we going to go? What are we going to do? So you can do this and you can do that. And then, and then what? And then what? And so uh, a lot of folks leave the truth for, for all kind of reasons. But I'm not, looking for a, I'm not looking for a reason to leave. I'm looking for a reason to stay. And there's a whole lot of reasons to stay. Never found any reason to leave. Great peace have they which love thy law, and nothing shall offend them. If you're offended, if you get offended, it's it's uh, it's not what somebody said or did. It's a love problem. Praise God. I've never uh, heard uh, T. D. Jake say one time. He said that uh, he was preaching in prison, and uh, the secu- he got down there preaching among them. And the security guard said, uh, "said you, you be, be careful. You know these are these are in here for a reason. These are not good people." He said, "Oh, don't worry about it. I was raised in church. If you can survive that, you can survive anything." <laughs> If you've been around church very long, you've survived some stuff. Amen. But nothing had ever made me want to think about doing something different. Appreciate my wife and uh, my daughters, uh, four daughters, and two of them were born here and dedicated here, Elder Triplett. And uh, the other two were, we'd already started in Virginia and was there. My youngest daughter's almost 21 and got grandkids I'm a grandpa so that comes with this you have to have these when you get grandpa and uh, a lot of things a lot of things happen but anyway we're here and uh, we're glad to be here and uh, I don't know uh, we, we didn't do much practicing
I don't know why uh, this uh, old song is on my mind, but uh, his old brother, uh, is that right? Go for it, one, two. Brother, uh, if old brother Smart was here, he'd say, go back into the den of antiquity. Is that good? Is that? I didn't come here to ask you for anything. I just came to talk with you, Lord. You've answered. Prayers are more that I've forgot to thank you for. I just came to talk with you, Lord. Maybe tomorrow there will be trouble and sorrow. favors to ask I just came to talk with you Lord How many times Lord has trouble brought me down to my knees but this time I just want to talk with you, Lord. You see, I have no selfish motive in mind. Lord, I just want to thank you for all the other times. I, I just came to talk with you, Lord. If you know it, help me sing it. tomorrow's task I have no special favors to ask I just came to talk with you Lord how, how many times Lord has trouble brought me down to my knees but this time I just want to talk with you Lord you've answered a million prayers or more that I have forgot to thank you for but I I just came to talk tomorrow's task I have no special favors to ask I just came to talk with you Lord oh I just came to talk with you
not an old song. Old folks start thinking old songs. But um, I don't know. Every once in a while I've only been where I'm at almost 30 years and uh, sometimes I still put out a song musicians never heard. So I may do that tonight. Kind of tells you on the age a little bit. I think 
think this is one of God, yeah, yeah. Praise God. Well, when I think of heaven, I can hardly wait to see my brand new mansion inside the pearly gates. But I won't have time to move inside for a million years or more. It'll take me a million years to thank the Lord. It'll take eternity to thank him for the joy that came when he spoke peace to me. When I found him, I found everything my soul was searching for. And it'll take me a million years to thank the Lord. Thank you. If you know it, help me sing. Well, for the first million years, you'll find me. I'm going to be sitting at the feet of the Lord. Well, I've got a lot of things I'd like to thank you. not singing it. So if I was at home, I'd say, I tell you what, I'm going to sing one more time and anybody lips, it's not moving. I'm going to bring you up here and let you sing a solo. But I'm not at home. I wouldn't do that. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Well, thank you, Jesus. Isn't God good to us? Amen. God bless you. sung that little chorus that Brother Evans used to sing about, uh, I'm glad I'm Jesus only. Y'all sing that here. That'd be a good one. Y'all would like that one if, you, if we can get these musicians in gear over here. Praise God. Well, I'm glad I'm Jesus only, baptized in Jesus' name. This mighty revelation has set my soul aflame. Now I can hear the devil's howling, but I'm safe within the fold, cause I'd rather be a Jesus only than anything I know. Well, I'm glad I'm Jesus only, baptized in Jesus' name. This mighty revelation has set my soul aflame. I can hear the devil's howling, but I'm safe within the fold. I'd rather be a Jesus only than anything I know. Well, I'm glad I'm Jesus only, baptized in Jesus' name. His mighty revelation has set my soul aflame. Now I can hear the devil's howling, but I'm safe within the fold. But I'd rather be a Jesus only than anything I know. Thank you, men. God bless you. Psalm 121. I don't know if y'all get out of church before dark here or not. We, we get out of church before dark on our part of the country. It makes us feel like we're Baptists or something. But, uh, amen. 
I'm glad for somebody that has church on Sunday night. A lot of folk don't even have church on Sunday night, period. So we ain't going to, we're not going to wear out the saints too long, I don't think. Praise God. Amen, amen. Thank you, Lord. God bless, brother. Epley, special friend in our life. Just Epley, welcome in our church anytime. Amen. Welcome. If he, if he walks in unexpected, I'll just go over and sit down and let him preach anytime. I wouldn't do that just to anybody. But. Amen. Psalm 121 and verse 1. I will lift up my eyes. Thank you, piano player. God bless you. I can't walk and chew chewing gum at the same time. I can't read and hear piano playing at the same time. I know some of them preachers, they just want you to play right along. I just ain't no telling what I'd be reading up here. When I hear music, I'm wanting to sing, praise God. I will lift up mine eyes to him. I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. Everybody read it with me. My help cometh from the Lord, which made the heavens and the earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be removed. He that keepeth thee, behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. Everybody read verse 5. The Lord is thy, the Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by night or the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. Let's ask God to have his way in the word of the Lord tonight. Would every hand be lifted, every voice be lifted, and ask God to help us here tonight. God, let the word of the Lord. in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank God for the word of the Lord. Amen. God bless you. you. may be seated. It only makes sense to me that you would look in the direction that your help is coming from. The Bible said when you begin to see all these things begin to come to pass, look up for your redemption draweth nigh. Some has said, I'm going to lift up mine eyes under the hills from whence cometh my help. As the mountains are round about Jerusalem, so is the Lord around about them that fear him. My help cometh from the Lord. I'm going to lift up mine eyes. I'm going to look the direction that my help is coming from. The outlook is hideous. The downlook is frightening. But the uplook is as good as it's ever been. There's a reason that there was only one window in the top of the ark. So they didn't want to see everybody that was drowning out there and see all the devastation that was going on horizontally. We can't get focused on what's going on horizontally. But I'm going to lift up my eyes. I'm going to look to the hills. Oh, thank you, Jesus. I'm going to look up, look up. If there's ever been a time to look up, God help us to be looking up. Religion is man's attempt to reach God, but salvation is God reaching down to man. And so I really want to talk about help tonight, or I've been helped, or divine help, something along them lines. It's what I've had pounding in my head ever since I was thinking about being here. For some reason, this has come to my mind, and I hope it can leave a little... Uh, thought a principle it's so simple if you're not careful you might miss it but I'll leave a little principle with you hopefully that will uh, if you hadn't caught it and you're living for God I want you to somebody to catch it tonight and carry, carry it with you the rest of your life if we make it and I shouldn't say that because I, I hate to even cast any doubt but the facts are that a lot of people have started this race and somehow they have shipwrecked and they have what we call uh, 
are backsliders, and I, I'm not even sure, uh, you know, uh, about all that. It's not a New Testament word, but uh, I'm, I'm not sure of what we call backsliders is really backsliders, but in our, in our mentalities. But if, if, we, if we see Jesus face to face, if we see or hear him say, well done, it's going to be because of one thing. And one thing only, that you were divinely helped. That you got some help. Oh, thank you, Jesus. I don't know. The scripture said in vision said that we were without Christ and aliens from the commonwealth of Israel, having no hope and without God in this world. That's what we were. We were without God having no hope. Without him, there is no hope. The church is the only vehicle that is going from earth to glory. And if we're going to heaven, you're going to have to get in the vehicle called the church. The scripture said in my Isaiah 59 that my ear is not heavy. My, uh, my uh, uh, arm is not short. Neither is my ear heavy. My hand is short. There's a lot of folks I'd like to help. There's a lot of folks I'd, I want them to live for God more than they want to live for God. But my hand is short. My, my attempts to help people are feeble. All that we can do, it's still very short and it's very feeble. But without the divine hand of the Lord reaching further than a preacher can reach, further than a mama can reach, further than a daddy can reach, somewhere or another God has got to get involved Oh, and God has to convict the sinner and bring them to a place to be even hungry and uh, desire God while they're on the bar stool, while they're out there somewhere. That God is working with them before they ever get to the house of God. So when you see people walk in the house of the Lord, you can know one thing for sure. It's not because they didn't have something else to do. When you see somebody walk through the house of the doors of the Lord, you'll know that God is talking to them. God's been dealing with them in the night. God's been stirring their heart. Oh, praise the Lord, because I know some folks don't want to go nowhere close to no church. So God is dealing and God is working while we don't, don't even know what's going on. We are not self-made. We are not self-sufficient. Jeremiah said, I, I'm just a, I was just a child. Solomon said, I, I, I'm just a child. I don't know how to go out. I don't know how to come in. And he bowed his knee and lifted his hands, and he was so humble. He, when, when he started out, he was so, so humble and said, God, I don't know how to do anything. If you would help me I, and, and, and give me wisdom and give me judgment to discern among your people, that's what I need. Somewhere or another, he turned from a, pray boy into a playboy and somewhere his divine wisdom turned into human reasoning oh hallelujah I want you to know that I still feel after all these years that I need God really bad oh, I'm worried about somebody that gets the feeling like that they can do it on their own the Jesus said without me you can do nothing. That means the first day, the second day, the 10th year, the 20th year, the 50th year. If you've been in the church all your life and you're 100 years old and had the Holy Ghost 80 years, you still need God's help as much today as you've ever needed it before. The earlier in life that you realize that this, is, that the, this life is the good life and the better way to live, and, and uh, to realize that uh, the earlier you realize this concept, the better your life will be. Is this is what you got to realize. And the earlier you can realize this, the better life will be. Is that I'm not smart enough. And I'm not strong enough. And I'm not tough enough. And I'm not pure enough. Ah, Hallelujah. My will is not strong enough. Somebody said, well, I've got my mind made up. I'm going to make it to the end. That's not enough. 
Seen a lot of folks that declared they had their mind made up. It's not just good enough to say I'm stubborn enough to stay in the church. Stubbornness is not going to keep you in the church. You can be stubborn and be in the building, but it don't mean you're in the church. <laughs> you can't just hold on to the end. You've actually got to have a good spirit when you get to the end. You've got to hold on and actually still be sweet in your spirit. Praise the Lord. And so we're, we're uh, I'm, I'm like all of y'all. We're all in the same boat. We're stumbling along through life. And uh, life can seem like a wilderness at times. And uh, you're just trying to find your way. Just trying to find your way. Just dodging bullets and trying to stay sane and saved and trying to keep your life together and your marriage together and keep your children in church and and uh, just trying to keep peace of mind, keep your mind clear almost every day of my life. I try to pray, Lord, keep my mind clear and my spirit right. And we try somehow to make ourselves believe that, uh, you know, I've been in church a long time and I can make it on my own. And uh, my strength, I don't have to get in there and push quite as much as I used to. And I've seen Sister Harris triplet. It's hard for us to get to remember your sister triplet, but Sister Harris triplet, I've seen her up here this morning praying. And, uh, you, you know, she really ought to be retired from that, right? But when it's in you, yeah, you can't do it. Amen. Well, what an example of a prayer warrior and a fighter unto the end. Amen, amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Sometimes we act like we have it all together. But the scripture says man at his best state is all together vanity. You, when you get it all together and you think you got all your ducks in the row and everything, you at your very best, you're still all together vanity. Oh, in the name of Jesus. I'm telling somebody tonight, don't ever get to the place that you think you can make it without God. It, it, we all say that. If somebody asks us, we're going to all say that, but I'm talking about feeling it. When you feel like you need God, this is what you're going this is what you're going to do every day. It ain't really no need getting down and praying every day and putting in a bunch of hours in prayer if you don't feel like you need God. Two things if you want to be saved and all the way to the end and we want to hear him say well done, there's two little things. I think we can reduce it down to at least tonight in my mind two two things beyond doctrine two concepts, and that is be thankful. If you'll stay thankful and stay humble, you'll make it. Praise God. If you can stay thankful and stay humble, say, well, I'm, going, I'm, going to, I'm not going to ever give up uh, this tenet of the doctrine or I'm not going to ever compromise on Acts 238 or compromise on something. All that's good. All that's good. But a tenet of doctrine is not going to keep you. There's something in your spirit that has got to be thankful. I'm thankful I'm here. I've been helped by God is a reason I'm here. The only reason any of us are here tonight is because we have been helped. Some help beyond your family. Some help beyond your mama. Some help beyond your daddy. Some help beyond your preacher. Oh, there's a lot of folks that sit on these same pews that's not here tonight, but somehow or another, God has helped us. God has been good to us, and I want to be thankful about it. I want to be thankful about it, and I don't want to feel like I have it all together and look down on somebody else. I want to be humble about it. I want to be humble and be thankful that God has somehow helped us. And we continue under this present day because God has divinely Think about Sister Epley several years ago. I don't remember when that uh, car wreck was. But the only reason you're here is because you've been helped. Brother Epley almost lost him a year ago. The reason 
It wasn't the doctors that kept him here. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, I, 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 it was because God helped him. It was because God spoke to him in that hospital. It is because God helped him. Oh, thank you, Jesus. I know where my help's coming from. Lord, let me stay thankful and let me stay humble. We could, uh, any of us could be uh, just, uh, you know, none of us are guaranteed tomorrow. God has helped us up to this present time and help us to be thankful and humble today because we could be having a funeral for any one of us in here before the week's out. Well, praise the Lord. Thank you for your divine help. Amen, amen. Israel in 1 Samuel, uh, Israel was afraid and they cried in the Lord and uh, that he would save them. And Samuel cried in the Lord for Israel and the Lord heard him. And the battle drew near and the Philistines uh, and, and the Lord thundered with a great thunder on that day upon the Philistines and discomforted them for they were smitten before Israel. And then he went on to say, the reason this has happened is hitherto hath the Lord helped us. We was in trouble. The Philistines was coming our way. And the reason we won the battle is because something come out of heaven. It wasn't our armor. It wasn't our strength. It wasn't our bows. It wasn't our military might. But the Lord thundered out of heaven. And something come this way. If we make it, it's going to be because of not all of our effort. Thank God for all our effort, but that's not going to get the job done. It's going to be because something comes this way. The Lord helped us, and we can turn around and say, Surely the Lord has helped us. I sought the Lord, Psalm 34 said, and he heard me and delivered me out of all of my fears. This poor man cried, and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all of his troubles. Paul said, in my flesh dwelleth no good thing. My flesh don't have any good thing. And the only good thing in any of us is what God has put in us. And the truth is, without God working in us, we don't have any hope. Paul said, O oh, wretched man that I was. He didn't say, oh, wretched man that I was. He was preaching the gospel, been converted, greatest missionary, I guess, that ever lived. And he said, oh, wretched man that I am. Oh, wretched man that I am. Who's going to do Don't you ever forget that we are so flesh is wretched. Hey, oh, flesh, don't ever get smart. That's why people at 60 years old is doing the same dumb things that 16-year-olds do. It's because flesh don't ever get smart. Flesh don't ever learn. Flesh, flesh can't be rehabilitated. That's why it has to die. The will has to be submitted. You have to say no to the flesh. You can't reason with the flesh. Praise the Lord. Trouble, trouble with many material things. Money is a good servant, but a bad master. And there ain't, there's very few people in this world that money don't change. And what we all better pray and what I pray, Lord, don't ever give me more than what I can handle. And help me to be faithful with what you put in my hands. Now, the, the fact is, you don't know how much you can handle. I don't know, but God knows. Lord, don't ever give me more than that would, uh, enough that would mess me up. Well, praise the Lord, because money does mess with people. There's people that go to college, and they get all kind of degrees, and they teach you in them godless universities, to be critical thinker and to critique and to uh, question everything, including this. To question, that's what they teach you. They pump it full of you. To question everything. And you can go and get so much smarts 
that you won't even be saved because you get so smart. You can get so much money that you think that money is supposed to give you a special seat somewhere. Praise God. And a whole lot of them that got it. And uh, a whole lot of them that got smarts. There's people that are homeless. We went to Washington, D.C. the other day, and there's, uh, if you don't know what's going on in Washington, D.C., the uh, not only the Democrats are taking over, the homeless are taking over. I guess they're all Democrats. But there are uh, tents everywhere. All the beautiful lawns and everywhere, there's tents stretched out everywhere and homeless people. I said, I would like to take a documentary. I'd like to go from tent to tent. I'd like to go ask them about, do you have any hope for the future? How did you get here? And is there any hope of you getting somewhere else? I'd like to hear their stories. Some of their stories, they were rich at one time. Some of their stories, they, are, they have college education. Oh, in the name of Jesus, money didn't help them. And college didn't help them. Oh, our, our help is not coming from the college. Our, our, coming is not, our, our help is not coming from our own intellect. Some preacher said he was a, uh, uh, going to school to be a doctor. A doctor. And a friend of mine said, I'd like to know what an apostolic preacher would do with a doctorate degree especially one in theology. I mean, what, what possibly benefit could that be? Praise the Lord. All right, God bless all you doctors done got fired on me. Praise God. But that was Leto Sia's issue. That was Leto Sia's problem. We are increased with goods and we don't need anything. We don't need, can you imagine getting to the place that you say, I don't need anything? Can you imagine? I don't need no more of God. We've got, we're rich in its creatures goods. We've got everything we need. But you know, when we don't pray, that's what we're saying. When you don't lift your hands, that's what you're saying. You're saying, I don't need him as bad as I used to when I first got off of drugs. I, I, I've learned to live for God and I've, I've learned how to keep the standards and I've learned and I don't have to pray like I used to pray. I don't have to fast like I used to fast. I used to be so energetic and excited, but I don't have to shout like that anymore. That's what you're really saying when their hands don't go up. That's what you're really saying when your legs don't move anymore. That's really what you're saying is, God, I don't need you as much as I used to need you. Mm, thank you, Jesus. I need him. I need him. Oh, Lord's blessed us with some nice cars, but Lord, don't give us cars so nice that we can't pick up somebody and bring them to church in it or go down a dirt road and get them. God's give us some nice clothes, but don't give us some so nice that we can't shout and get them sweaty. Thank God for a nice shoes, but don't let them be so nice that we can't stomp and shout at them. Oh, in the name of Jesus, thank God for what the Lord has helped us with. The Lord's main blessing is not things. It's not things. A lot, of, a lot of stuff I can't figure out. and Many people I don't understand, but there's one thing I know, and that is Wayne Lawhorn needs God. Without God, anybody else you'd see out there, that would be me. Somebody said, well, if I, if I ever got out of church, I would never be dumb enough to go smoke dope. I wouldn't be dumb enough to ruin my life. I wouldn't be dumb enough to do this. Oh, without God, with God, all things are possible. And without God, anything is possible. Without God, you don't know where you'd be, where you'd end up. It'd probably be a lot like your cousin's and a lot like your extended family that have your same DNA without God. Oh, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord. Somebody say, I thank you, Jesus. I need you, Jesus. I need help, Jesus. Without divine help, I don't have no hope. 
We forget about our pride, forget about our reputation, forget about our religious affiliation and, and just, just say, I'm, I'm drowning. I'm lost. I'm dying. I need help. I need God. There was a woman in Matthew 15 that said, my daughter is grievously vexed with the devil. Now, you know when, when a woman says that her daughter has got the devil, she's getting pretty honest because most of them think their kids are all right, you know. She said, my, my daughter is full of the devil and we need some help. And she got desperate and she got downright honest about it. And then folks was kind of making fun of her and picking on her and pushing her away and calling her names and being prejudiced. She didn't let that stop her. She didn't let the prejudice of the disciples stop her. Amen. She kept on coming and Jesus said, I'll tell you what, I don't know. Uh, it's really before your time. You're not supposed to be getting any help right now. But you are pushing my buttons. God has some buttons. He said, thank you, Jesus. He started, he started pushing him. I'm just she, the Bible said she fell down and worshipped him. Hey Amen. What would God not do for a worshiper? What would God not do for a worshiper? Thank you, Jesus. Oh, found some divine help. Even Jesus is calling her a dog. And she just kept on coming with worship. And he said, it's true, Lord. Call me a dog. It's so. I'm everything you say I am. I'm no good. There's nothing in me, but I'm here for help. Mm, hallelujah. Oh, when God calls you a dog, you got to say amen. <laughs> How many of you would let God spit in your eyes if you're blind? Amen. Sometimes it's going to sound like the preacher's preaching. He's just about spitting in your eyes. And you say, Lord, go ahead and spit in my eyes. If God can use a little bit of clay like Elder Epley, if he can use a little clay to help open your eyes, <laughs> amen, and thank God for the clay that was put in my eyes to let me see what I've never seen before. Thank you, Jesus. So, Lord, help us today not to get proud and haughty and arrogant. We've been helped by God so much. And if, if God ever withdraws his hand, we're going to fall. If God withdraws his hand, we're going to fall. You're not holding yourself up. It's thy favor that hath made my mountain to stand strong. It's God that has kept us from evil. It is God that is our keeper. It is God that has preserved us. I was thinking about we got married, me and my wife, 35 years ago tomorrow, and uh, I'd only seen her a couple times. Don't recommend that, but that's that's the way it was. And seen her a couple. Hadn't seen her in a year before we married, and uh, and uh, I imagine most of them people there from Milford. I imagine all them. Hundreds of people that was there looking at that wedding. I imagine well over 50% of them probably said, that couple ain't got no, ain't no way they'll ever make it. Right. Under their breath, you know, and, and their secret thoughts. And carnally looking at it, they was right. They was right. This is a crazy thing to do. This is a crazy idea. I don't know why she's marrying this guy from another country coming up there that don't even know each other uh, y'all don't want to hear all that when I called her and asked her to marry her she was dating somebody else I said uh, I think I ought, to, I ought to get married she said well I'm, 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 I'm dating somebody else I said well I'll, I'll give you next week to make up your mind I'll call you back next week and, and uh, if you want to break up with him Break up with him or whatever you want to do. But if you're going to get married, you're going to have to break up with him. <laughs> Praise God. And so, Lord, have mercy. I was saying, God, we sure needed some help along the way. We sure needed some divine help. I promise you after 35 years, if you've been married 35 or 40 or 50, you, you don't have to act, act so sanctified. You know it was some divine help. 
that has kept you together. In this world that is tearing families apart. In the world that is, it is turning families upside down. And it happens right inside apostolic churches. It's God's help that's helped us. It's God that has been merciful to us. You got a family intact in here. We walk in restaurants when my children are little and they brag on all the children how they looked. And, you know, folks from our church go in places and, and they see a family together. And, and folks just come up and just, just, just can't, they can't hardly believe it. That, that a family's sitting there and the, and, the, and the kids act like they have some sense and, and uh, uh, not rolling all under the table and tearing things off the, well, praise God, I won't get into child rearing, but anyhow, you know, and, and you know, when somebody comes up and compliments you, Brother Cotton, I think that's your name, that's your, how long y'all been married? 31. When somebody... <laughs> I'm glad you're still married, praise God. Uh, so when, God, when somebody comes up to you and says, man, how do you keep your marriage together? 30 years. How, how, how is your kids not on drugs? And How is this? There, there's really one thing you can say. We don't have no book. We don't have no self-help book. There's just one thing that we can tell them and to say, I, I was, I've been helped by God. It ain't no secret formula for raising children. It ain't no secret formula for keeping your marriage together. What it really is is God has helped us. That's what it really is. Praise the Lord. So when you're witnessing to somebody, don't act like you got it all together and act like some apostolic hypocrite. Why don't you come on down here because this is where, you know, the... Why, why don't you be honest about it and just say you'll get a lot further witnessing. Just a little witnessing tip for the outreach program. <laughs> just tell them, hey, won't you come on down here to church with me and get some help where I get it. So you're not elevating yourself up here that this is where I've got some help. This is where I'm getting help. I still ain't where I need to be. I'm still not got it all together. But this is where I get daily bread. This is where we got a preacher that preaches the word of God. And it's unbelievable how that word helps us. And come, that's what soul winning is, is really one beggar telling another beggar where to get bread. One person telling another, this is where I get my help. This is how I've kept my marriage intact. This is how I've kept my family in the house of God. Well, praise the Lord. Thank God for some divine help. This is where we get our help. Our help cometh from the Lord. When you get to the end of yourself, that's when you really find God. And sometimes it takes people being in church, it seems like quite a few years, to ever really get a revelation that, uh, you know, some folk, Kind of get the idea that God got a real good deal when he got me, you know. And uh, I'm, I've really been an asset to the church, you know. And I don't know how they'd get along without me. <laughs> Praise God. People like that, don't they won't be around too long. Oh, but Lord, help us to be humble and be thankful and realize we're here because there was a divine hand in it. If you're in an apostolic church, it's because there was a, somebody might have knocked on your door, somebody might have visit, invited you and visited, whatever, but it was a divine hand. It was a divine hand that brought you to the house of the Lord and prepared your heart to seek after God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Somebody understand what I'm saying tonight? Somebody understand? Somebody understand? Seeing then that we have a great high priest, let us come boldly before the throne that we may find grace, may obtain grace and find help in the time of need. He is our refuge and strength and a very present help in the time of trouble. When I, when I, when I step across that great divide, a black lady in a church used to say, on these mornings, I'm going to step out of time and 
step into eternity. When I take my first breath of eternal air, when I see the lights of that city, when I get, first get a glimpse of the face of grace, I know I'm going to say one thing. I've been divinely helped. I've been helped. I wouldn't have got here if I hadn't had some divine help. I wasn't smart enough. I wasn't strong enough. All the trials, all the stuff you go through. How many's been through some stuff? You're going to go through some stuff living for God. You know what you'd be if you didn't go through a bunch of stuff? You'd be little spoiled brats. You know what you'd be if God answered every prayer? Be little spoiled brats. But oh, we go through some stuff and go through a lot of stuff that we don't understand. Somebody said, when I get to heaven, I'm going to ask him. No, you're not going to need to ask him anything. Praise God, because all the former things are going to be wiped away. And you're going to say, as I'm in the presence of God and I was helped by some divine help that I got here. Oh, if it had not been for the Lord who was on my side. Now may Israel say, if it hadn't been for the Lord who was on our side, when men rose up against us, they had swallowed us up quick when their wrath was kindled against us. The waters had overwhelmed us and the stream had gone over our soul. The proud waters had gone over our soul. Blessed be the Lord who had not given us a prey in their teeth. Our soul escaped like a bird out of the snare of the fowler. The snare is broken and we are escaped. Our help is in the name of the Lord that made the heavens and the earth. Let's stand and thank God for it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you for my help. Why don't you let God know how you feel about it? He's helped you. Why don't you let him know how you feel about his help? Why don't you let him know how you feel about it? Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, if it had not been for the Lord on my side. Y'all know that old song? Where would I be? Oh, Brother Tim, is that true? Brother, brother, not Brother Tim, Brother Tim, what, I forget your name. Kim, come on up here. Praise God, you look so much like your daddy. Thank y'all for letting us stay in your house when we was first married. Boy, your wife kept a clean house. Them little girls is up vacuuming every morning before they went to school. Praise God. You know why you're still here? You've been helped. You've been helped. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Through physical trials, family trials, all kind of things you go through in life, things that everybody goes through, just old common stuff you go through and old stuff I'd like to get in your heart and if you're not careful, things try to get bitter. And, but when you come through with a pure spirit and a clean, you can lift your hand and say, God, you help me. You help me. You help me. Praise God. You help me, Jesus. That's really all it is. You help me, God. If it had not been for the Lord on my side, somebody tell me where. Would I be? Why don't you get out and walk around? Thank him a little bit if God's helped you. Well, if it had not been for the Lord on my side, tell me where would I be? Where would I be? Well, if it had not been for the Lord on my side, tell me where would Somebody tell me where, well, where would I be? Well, if it at all, sing it to him. For the Lord, 
Somebody tell me where. Well, he cast my enemies away, gave me sunshine on a cloudy day. Well, he rocked me in the cradle of his love. Somebody tell me where, well, where would I, well, if it had not been for the Lord, tell me where, where would I be? Thank you, Jesus. You look at somebody, some of you, I'm sure probably older than Brother Epley, Brother Epley's 70 years old, and uh, I'm trying to be nice to old preachers because I'm headed that way myself. you got a lot of stories, and you can wrap them all up in one thing and say, the Lord is help. The Lord's help, Brother Epley. The Lord's help, Brother Smith. Those you young folks look at somebody at 60 and 70. And 80 years old, still got the victory. There's one thing you can say. The Lord's helped them. The Lord's helped them. Somebody's got gray hair, you can say the Lord's helped them. they still in the house of God all these years. The Lord has helped them. The Lord's helped them. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Let every young person get a hold of that same help. In the name, let them realize you ain't going to make it. You ain't going to make it because your mama's here, your daddy's here. You ain't going to make it because you're raised in the apostolic pew going to be, you're going to make it because you get some divine help. God bless you. Well, you're not going to make it on your own. Got to have help. You ain't tough enough. You're not strong enough. Life is going to send enough stuff by your way. Amen. You won't have to have help. Oh, I wanna, I wanna, I wanna do that. I can't imagine a church saying, "I have need of nothing." But that's what they said. When you read those other six churches, they had hor- ungodly sins, false doctrines, all kind of trouble. But that church, God said, "You make me wanna puke." You make me want to vomit. Oh, God, I want to be a million miles away from that. I want to need some help. I try to make it a practice here while I'm praying because I sit right down here and pray. And I don't kneel much anymore because I can't hardly get up. My own knees is just kind of, you know, that just, that, that's what you boys got to look forward to. Praise God. And even when I first came here, 11 years ago, I was kicking, I could, kick, I could kick pretty high. I told them years ago, I was doing the Holy Ghost Charleston. Now I'm doing the Tennessee Waltz, praise the Lord. It's just, you just get kind of slowed down. But I, I pray right here, I'm sitting praying. While I'm praying, I'm telling God, I'm on the, I want this church to hear me when I pray. I'm asking God, God, won't you forgive me for my sins? Forgive me for my iniquities. Cleanse me, Lord. Take out anything in me that I'll not be. Amen. I don't want to get out here and pray where, where folks don't feel like that. Uh, well, he's a preacher. He don't need help. I'm going to tell you, everybody needs help. No matter how long you've been in the church. If we wish to flash your thoughts on this screen that you had this week. You'd run out of this building. Ain't nobody in this house won't ever thought you had. Oh, yeah, 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 you on that screen. That's why you need help. Got to have help. Thank you for that preacher for preaching to us today. Got to have help. Amen. Brother Lawhorn, that's what you knew, old guy at it, son. He revised a lot of those uh, old, uh, mostly old country songs. I think he might be dead now. If he ain't, he's old, I tell you. But he, 
They used to have that, but he sang an old song. I don't know what's right and wrong. <laughs> Just help me make it through the night. <laughs> Lord, I, amen, that old, old country song. I don't know what it was all about, but anyhow, I got saved from that a long time ago, but but it, it's Lord, I, I mean, Lord, I was want to. Help, I don't just help me through the night. Amen. Well, Wayne, we had a good weekend. Thank everybody again for all your kind remarks and cards and offering and everything. So good to us. I hope my deputies can hear me out there. Thank you for our deputies. It's coming. Appreciate them. Well, you're dismissed in Jesus' name to Wednesday night. God bless you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God.